Thank you, Brenda. Um, so to paraphrase very loosely, the, um, the tagline of an old TV show, there are 8 million sermons in the 20th chapter of John. This is one of them. But which one is it? Is it the one about a Jesus who appears even though the doors are locked? Is it the one about Jesus breathing a Holy Spirit into the disciples? This is John's version of the Pentecost story? Is it an exploration of the, um, the meaning of letting go of sins or holding fast to them? Does it discuss the, um, the closing two verses of the chapter which speak of the evangelist's reason for writing. This chapter of John <clears throat> is likely the original ending of the gospel. It's thought that chapter 21 was tacked on uh, some years later and that it was written um, <clears throat> by someone other than the person who wrote the gospel. Well, my reflections, as always, turn to Thomas. The story of Thomas has always interested me, pulled me in. I suppose in some ways I identify with Thomas. I have a bit of a background in science and I want things to be um, experimentally validated. Can't do much of that in, uh, in theology, religion. But Thomas has a bad reputation, as you may know, <clears throat> until fairly recently. Um, he's called Doubting Thomas, even though nowhere in this text does John describe Thomas as doubting. Um, and there is a perfectly good word. In fact, there are two perfectly good words for doubt uh, in New, New Testament Greek. Um, and one of them uh, is used in a story about Peter. And Jesus uh, comes walking on the water and uh, Peter wants to leap in and walk towards Jesus. And he does for a moment or two and then begins to flounder and Jesus says to him, oh, you of uh, little faith, why do you doubt? But that's not the word that's used here, and I want to come back to that. Thomas is an interesting character. We don't hear about him in the Synoptic Gospels, except that he always appears in the list of the names of the disciples. But we do hear about him in John's Gospel. Three separate times, in fact. Here in chapter 20, once in the story of the death of Lazarus. You may remember when Jesus hears that Lazarus is ill, he decides not to go to uh, be with the family in spite of the closeness of their friendship. And then he hears that Lazarus has died and that is the impetus for him to say, I, I'm going to Bethany. And the disciples all try to persuade him not to go. Uh, they're worried that the Jewish authorities will uh, use this opportunity 
uh, to arrest Jesus, and uh, they're worried on his behalf. Um, but Thomas says, no, let us go with him that we may die with him. A little bit of an echo there of Peter saying that he would never deny Jesus. The other story uh, comes during the course of the long discourse that Jesus gives on the uh, occasion of the Last Supper in John's Gospel. And there's a conversation going on about Jesus saying he was going to be leaving them, that he's going to prepare a place for them, um, and, uh, and then that they will come to be with him. And they will know the way, he says. And Thomas is the one who pipes up and says, Sir, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus replies, I am way, truth, life. So Thomas is a man of courage. He's a man of honesty. I suspect that all of the other disciples sitting at the table that night were wondering what in heaven's name Jesus was on about now. But it was only Thomas who had the courage to say, what are you talking about? How will we know where you are? How will we find the way? A man of courage, a man who is honest about his uncertainties, his questions, and his doubts. So the story tells us that on the first Sunday of the resurrection, the disciples are all together in a locked room, except for Thomas. So the other 10 are all there. And Jesus is in their midst, wishes them peace or um, reminds them that peace is with them and um, breathes a Holy Spirit onto them. And so needless to say, the disciples are excited um, and overjoyed, the text says. But Thomas isn't there. And the text uh, doesn't tell us why Thomas isn't there. And nobody really knows, although Doug did suggest at Bible study on um, Thursday evening that Thomas was off making travel arrangements for his trip to India. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, apparently the other disciples persist in saying to Thomas, we have seen the risen one. We have seen Jesus, and Thomas doesn't believe, for whatever reason. Maybe just the reason that it would be hard for me to believe that someone was risen from the dead. Now, there's a couple of interesting things about the text. And the first is that the Greek um, syntax that's used, the Greek um, story, suggests that perhaps there had been, uh, that this wasn't the first time that Thomas had not been with the disciples, that perhaps Thomas was experiencing some, some difficulties with that community, and that that's why he wasn't there on that first Easter evening. The other thing that's interesting is that the disciples don't just say to Thomas, this is what happened, make of it what you will. They keep, they're persistent at going to Thomas and saying, we've seen, we've seen. And Thomas famously says, unless I see the marks in his hand and put my finger in them and put my hand in his side, I will not believe or have faith or trust. 
the Greek word can mean all three. And for some reason, the next week, when the disciples are again together, Thomas is once again with them. The door is locked and Jesus is there. And Jesus says to Thomas, Thomas, see my hands, my side, put your finger in them, put your hand in my side. And Thomas says, my sovereign, my God. Thomas, we don't hear of him actually needing to, to touch the wounds. But Jesus' presence and the presence of Jesus' wounds lets Thomas know that this is the real thing. This is not some ghost. This is his teacher, his leader. This is Jesus. And Jesus says to Thomas, do not become faithless, but faith-filled. It's always a struggle for me to figure out how to, uh, to translate the Greek word because there is only one word in Greek that covers belief and faith and trust. And mostly um, I now go to trust because trust um, seems to me a little bit more than belief, um, which is sometimes so tied to something we do in our heads. Um, it's more than um, a commitment of the heart um, because uh, it's, faith is sometimes uh, the, a little bit stronger belief um, involving uh, some personal kind of commitment. And trust seems to me to mean that you are willing to risk your belief, your faith um, in action. One of the commentators uh, that I was reading this week talked about um, this, that, that trust involves the head, the heart, and the feet. And the feet are significant because it's feet that follow along a road, along a way. And then finally, Jesus says to Thomas, have you trusted because you have seen me? Fortunate the ones not having seen yet having trusted. Unfortunately, this text has often been used to say that it's really better if you can believe without seeing, if you don't need to have some um, tangible assurance of the presence of God. But the Greek word doesn't mean it's any better. This is the word that we find in the Beatitudes. So um, although we've often said this is blessed, well, yes, it is blessed. It's, it's fortunate in a way. I think of some of my friends who don't have nearly the kind of doubt that I do um, and the assurance in their faith. And I think how fortunate they are that they don't have to keep wrestling these texts, um, wrestling with questions and doubts. Fortunate, but not better. It is what it is. So it says John, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, but they're not written in this book. But these ones have been written down. And then we have a little problem. There are two words very closely related. In fact, they're one letter different in the uh, Greek manuscripts and nobody knows which is the original. So it's either 
they've been recorded so that you may come to faith, come to trust that Jesus is God's anointed and that in trusting you may have life in his name? Or is it that you may continue? So is this a book intended for people who have never encountered Jesus before so that they will read these stories and come to that kind of uh, faith and trust? Or is it intended for people who are already part of the community? I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of difference. I think it's um, good to have these texts. And one of the things that when I've been reading this um, lesson this week that has come to me is, you know, faith, belief, trust is not an either or situation. It's a, it's a journey, it's a process. Thomas, Thomas is an example of someone who lets his doubts strengthen his faith. Thomas also is part of a community which allows space for his doubts. And it's good to find a community of followers who leave space for our doubts and who encourage us and support us when doubts loom heavy. This time through, it's also seemed to me that there's a renewed call to Thomas in this passage. Looks to me like a really strong parallel in this text between uh, the story that we find in John 21 of Jesus' encounter with Peter. So Thomas has fallen away as have all the disciples. And Jesus doesn't make a big deal of it. But what he says to Thomas is so loving and so forgiving and so willing to let go of the past and get on with the future. I almost feel like Jesus is saying to Thomas, well, so you blew it. But that was then and this is now. And so now do not become faithless, except it's not really faithless. Um, English is such a hard language sometimes. And I think the better word here, better words is without faith. I don't think any of us can live without some kind of faith. But what Jesus says to Thomas is, do not become faithless, but faith filled. We've too often seen these, um, uh, this sentence that Jesus speaks as being as two commands. Uh, don't doubt and have faith. But the words aren't verbs, they're adjectives. And the only verb, the imperative word in this sentence is become. Jesus wants Thomas to walk the path of faith. Jesus calls Thomas to walk a path of faith. And the risen Jesus calls us. Do not, do not give up on faith, but be faith filled. May it be so. Amen.